A blitz of primaries this month. Voters heading into the polls again this day, this time in Nebraska and West Virginia. Voting is underway right now with polls closing in the next several hours. Today's primaries are testing the true political power of former President Trump and his grip on the Republican Party ahead of the midterms. Can he pull another big win for the candidates he's endorsed? Not only are we keeping an eye on the races in West Virginia with our News Nation station, but we are also on the ground in Nebraska. This is a live look now outside a polling station in Omaha where voters can still vote until 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. One of the hot races in Nebraska is the Republican gubernatorial primary, and right now it is a dead heat between the candidates. News Nation's Marky Martin joins us live in Lincoln, Nebraska. And Marky, you talked to one of the top candidates in the governor's race. Hey, Ruta Bay. Yeah, big day here. Primaries well underway. We're inside one of the polling locations in Lincoln, Nebraska. Have been talking to voters all day long. But yeah, also got that one on one interview with one of the top three gubernatorial candidates. This is a candidate who has been accused of sexual misconduct and also has the backing of former President Donald Trump, whose endorsement power, as you just mentioned, is being put to the test not only here in Nebraska, but in primaries across the country. We can't complain if we don't vote. It's election day here in Nebraska. I haven't been able to vote in a ton of primaries, but this one seemed particularly important. Voters fueled by a wide array of local and national issues. Number one, we're coming for our freedoms. Women's rights, privacy, the government trying to interfere in our most intimate family business. Tuesday's big ticket item, a hotly contested gubernatorial race. The top three Republican candidates, Senator Brett Lindstrom, University of Nebraska Regent Jim Pillen, and businessman Charles Herbster. So we're going to elect Charles W. Herbster, a good man. Herbster, a fifth generation farmer and rancher, campaigning with the backing of former President Donald Trump. How are you? We spoke with Herbster on the campaign trail I, I, whatever it takes, at a pizza shop outside Lincoln. It's not about endorsements, it's not about speeches, it's not about all the bad stuff that they've tried to shellack me with. The gubernatorial candidate accused of groping eight women, including a state senator. The truth is, I've never done anything like that in my entire life, never even thought. About it. So it's unfortunate, but as Donald J. Trump says, welcome to politics. For the primaries, thousands of registered Democrats and independents switching their party affiliation to Republican, likely to vote for the more moderate GOP candidate. It feels like seeing other people play. It's a strategy Democrat and pastor Thomas Dumermuth considered, but then decided against. I don't know. It feels like bending the rules of the game, and I don't feel okay doing that. And Rudabay, whoever wins the GOP nomination tonight will likely become the next governor of Nebraska. This is a state that hasn't elected a Democratic governor since the mid-90s. Those results from today's primary will start rolling in at 8 o'clock Central and will be live all night long. Rudabay. It's an interesting start already. Marky, thank you. To West Virginia now, where it is a political face-off, a shrinking population causing the state to lose a congressional seat, this forcing two incumbents, David McKinley and Alex Mooney, to go head-to-head -head in the second district's primary. This is the very first incumbent versus incumbent primary race of the year. Both candidates heading into today with a powerhouse backing, the winner possibly shaping the future of West Virginia. News Nation's Mark Curtis joins us now live. Mark. Right away, I'm going to take us back to our childhood. Remember that game, Musical Chairs? You have two Republican incumbent members of Congress on the dance floor. The music's playing, and they're circling just one chair. And when the music stops, there will only be one seat for them to sit down in. So one of these guys is going to be out. These two incumbents now are relying on their records, and they're hitting the ground in this ultimate battle of influence. West Virginia heads into primary day with one of the most watched races in the nation, U.S. House District 2. West Virginia, only one of three states to see its population decline between the 2010 and 2020 census, eliminating a U.S. House seat and leaving a lasting impact on the state's political power. Both congressmen earning major endorsements, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice throwing his support behind Congressman McKinley, even Democratic Senator Joe Manchin reaching across the aisle to endorse the Republican Republican representative calling him a quote true West Virginian. 
But as is the case in Republican primaries across America this year, the West Virginia race is viewed as another referendum on President Trump's grip on the GOP. After helping J.D. Vance to victory on Ohio, the former president is backing Mooney in West Virginia. And that stamp of approval could be enough to win it for Mooney, as Trump won nearly 70 percent of the vote in West Virginia in 2020. David McKinley is a seventh generation West Virginian. That plays very well with the locals here. On the other hand, Alex Mooney is a Maryland native who actually served 12 years in the Maryland State Senate, then moved across the Potomac River and ran for Congress from West Virginia. A lot of people don't see him as a real West Virginian, so that could be a factor in this race. Obviously, the big Trump card, pardon the pun, is the endorsement of Donald Trump. Again, he is backing Alex Mooney in this race. Trump won West Virginia in 2016 and 2020 with 42 point margins, his biggest margins in the United States. So we'll see if his influence is a factor here in West Virginia. Reporting for Rush Hour on News Nation from Charleston, West Virginia, I'm Mark Curtis, Rudabe. Yeah, we'll see how that Trump card works out. Mark, thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.